And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. We're back, episode 12, MMA Uncensored Live, baby. Happy to be back. Always feels like a week. It just takes too long for some reason. But I want to give a very special thank you to last week's guests, Sugar Sean O'Malley and Damon Feldman, uh, CEO of Celebrity Boxing, who made breaking news and announced Celebrity MMA coming soon, November 2020. So we are very, very excited about that. And uh, there's a lot, a lot to come with that. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, guys, do me a favor. I want First, I want to thank everybody. The subscriptions on YouTube are really starting to take off. So thank you, guys. So please subscribe to YouTube for all of the previous episodes that we've had, the original content that we're putting out. Uh, it's much appreciated. So thank you guys very much. Also, visit us on IG at MMA Uncensored, double underscore. Uh, we we're actually trending today, surprisingly, on Instagram, which was pretty cool. We're just under 400,000 followers right now. I would love for us, uh, if possible, if we can get there in the next couple of days. Uh, but I seriously want to thank all you fans. You guys are awesome. Uh, even the, you know, interacting with you guys and girls on uh, on IG, it's a lot of fun. Uh some of you make fun of me too, and I thank you. That's 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 very nice of you. But uh, no, seriously, thank you guys so much for continuing to follow. It's much appreciated. Tonight, uh, we have a very special guest on. She will be making her return, hopefully very soon, to the UFC. None other than the future, Macy Barber. Let's bring her up. Macy. Hey, how are you? Doing great. Looks like uh, you got some beautiful weather by you there. I am. Uh, I have. Uh, I'm in Colorado. And this is my last day here. I'm a little bit bummed, but I get to head back to Wisconsin tomorrow. So, okay, okay. Hopefully, the weather's just as nice. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it will be. I had a I had a guest on a few weeks ago. Uh, she's she's a Playboy model, and uh, she lives out in Wisconsin. Okay. And she's, the weather has been very nice, from what she was saying. So, hopefully, it stays nice. that way. Yeah, I know my uh, my family's back there, and they said that they are going out on the lake tonight. So. They were, or uh, that they did go. I think it's probably a little late now, but um, uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to some lake days. That's awesome. So, how long have you been in Colorado for? Um, I flew. So I was born and raised here, but I flew out. Um, nope, I drive. I drove out. Uh, oh, wow. I drove out on the third. I drove from Wisconsin to Colorado to here, um, but I stopped in Omaha and trained a little bit. And just like, you know, stayed overnight so I could break up the drive. Uh, and then I've been here since since then. I went a quick trip to Vegas to go see the UFC PI and get some testing done. Get my cheat my knee checked up on. And uh, yeah, now I'm officially done. So getting ready to head home. I was going to ask you, how's that ACL doing? It's good. Here's my yeah. here's my lovely scar. I don't know Ooh, if you can see that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's nice. We like to call um, that a battle scar. I know. I'm like, uh, yeah. it's kind of ugly, but at the same time, I'm like, I love it. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's a good, it's a good little story for me. So that's right. Every scar has a story. That's pretty badass. And I wanted to for ask sure. you your, your last fight. I was super curious about this. I purposely didn't mm -hmm. listen to any other interviews because I wanted to get it from you and nobody else. But when you were in the octagon that time and the doctor checked you, and I'm sure people have asked you this question before, he did a quick analysis of you, and then he told the referee right in front of you, there's a slight tear in your ACL. Did you hear him say that? Um, I, I knew that he walked up and he told him what was wrong. I didn't exactly – I was kind of, like, out of it at that point. Mm -hmm. I, knew my, I knew my leg was torn. You know, I knew it was torn from, like, the very beginning. Uh, so I already knew what was, you know, happening. Um, I didn't know that he could, like, actually – you know, check my leg and be like, oh, she has a partial tear over ACL. She's fine. Like, that was pretty, that was pretty good. <laughs> I was, I mean, I'm glad he made you continue at least. I mean, I'm sure you didn't I, want oh the fight Oh my gosh, against I him. am so glad he made, he let me continue. I, that's all I wanted. Like, I was fighting. I didn't want him to let me, I didn't want him to call it. Like, all I cared about was at the time that I, that I tore my knee, like, I thought that I was going to be able to fight through it. And then, like, the pain kicked in the second round and then the third round. And um, the only thing I was like, I just, I'm just going to make it out of this fight without her finishing me. And maybe I'll get lucky and, you know, <laughs> something will happen. But I'm like, I, the only thing I cared about was getting out of that fight and not being finished. Cause like, I just wanted to go the whole 15 minutes. I don't even care. Sure. I just wanted to fight. So, uh, yeah, I'm just glad he didn't stop it. You, uh, you know, you're a true fan favorite. And I, I think your, your stock went up for sure after that fight, because you showed so much heart in that, uh, 
how was the the recovery what was the road to recovery like with the acl after the fight like what happened you know did you go see a doctor the next day or that night yeah um so the road to recovery has been a roller coaster it's not even a road it's like those giant windy up and down twists and turns um but the night of when i tore it i would they put me in a wheelchair and they got me eventually out of the arena um and they brought me back to the hotel and um the hotel had a they had a wheelchair so i had they had separate ones they had to move me from like the arena one to the hotel one and um i could not move so my dad and my coach picked me up and brought me into the bathroom and my mom came in and helped me shower uh which was a very traumatic and emotional experience for both of us like i just her she was bawling her eyes out washing my hair out and i'm like mom it's okay (laughs) um i actually haven't told anybody that but it was like that was like one of the most sad moments that i've ever it broke my heart to see my mom so upset but you know blood's just coming down uh into the i was nasty wow um so after that, we got me out of the shower and I just laid in bed and the, all the coaches came in and, you know, checked on me. And um, the next day we flew to Hawaii. That's, we, a, nice, that's a nice little recovery, it's though. It's kind of a weird, weird situation, <laughs> but um, I, the doctor couldn't do like the MRIs or anything because of it was too swollen. So they wanted to okay. wait um, until it was the swelling had gone down. So when the swelling had gone down, then... Um, we got back from our trip in Hawaii and I got it checked out and then we did surgery like the next couple days. So I had f- surgery on February 10th. Um, and then I was kind of out of it for a little bit, but then like we started therapy like two days after, and then I was in oh, like wow. that machine that moves your leg. So the whole goal was like, after they fix it, it's like, how soon can we get you moving your leg? So mm. that was, that was difficult. Cause I was like drugged up and trying to go in the physical therapy office and it was a little weird, but <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was uh, good memories and good stories for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I'm sure your mom is much stronger <laughs> now uh, after that experience. Oh, man, we're best friends. My mom is my best friend, and I just – I hate to have her see that part, but at the same time, there's no other person I'd rather have see that part than her. So Absolutely, it's, and it's I'm really sure cool. – and I'm sure no matter what, she wanted to be there. So that's uh, yeah, for sure. My whole family. Point. I mean, everybody was in, in there with me. I mean, my siblings. You know, mm-hmm. right after that happened, my siblings were in the room, and they were all like very cautious and pretty upset. They were all bawling their eyes. I'm like, no, it's okay. I'm all right. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's my family's really close, so it, it was really good to have them all there. That's amazing. How has the UFC yeah. been? Uh, you know, during your road to recovery, have they been supportive? How that yeah, been? for sure. I mean, mm-hmm. also with the the whole COVID stuff, I mean, at first they weren't running any fights, but mm-hmm. right after that fight, you know, I talked to Hunter and Dana and they were both like, you know, you showed amazing heart. And this is like, they, they came right up to me and they, they talked to me right after the fight and they were like, don't even feel bad about that. Like nothing. And, um, they're like, whatever you need, we're going to get it for you. You know, we're going to help you out through this, whatever you need, just let us know. Um, so I've, you know, been communicating with them off and on and they've both texted me and checked up on me and, you know, seen how my recovery is going. And, uh, especially with like media sources, you know, they've helped me kind of get some other extra opportunities with, um, just, just like, like the UFC events, you know, how, like when you, when the fighters go to do them live, like go to the UFC events for like the fan experiences, yeah. they couldn't do that because of the virus, but instead right. they would like bring me on and do like the FaceTime. Uh, so that's cool. You know, it keeps, keeps me engaged and keeps me, uh, motivated and, and kind of in that scene. So it's been, it's been really good for me, uh, with this recovery. So they've been really good. That's awesome. I like that. Yeah. You know, I, I gotta say like Dana, the UFC, they've been very creative with this whole thing that's mm-hmm. going on. Uh, have they, have they spoken to you? Well, first and foremost, like, when do you feel you'll be fight ready? Do you feel you're ready now? Or there's still a little bit more time. Um, so what I talked to my therapist, uh, we, I've on, I'm on a really fast track. Like I have made so many improvements. Um, when I went in a few weeks ago, (laughs) he mistakenly was like, you could fight by August. And I was like, wait a minute, if I could fight by August, that means I start a camp like tomorrow. Right. He's like, no, I mean, like, you can start fully training by August, or you should be able to if all goes the same way that it has. So um, just based off of the way the track is going the, of healing, um, I should be able to start fully training and grappling and, and everything 
um, by August or September. So hopefully, you know, if, if everything goes perfectly, I could be fighting as early as November. That would be really pushing it. Um, or December, uh, or January. I would love to fight in December just because, you know, I'd love to be able to say I tore my ACL and fought two fights in one year, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might be pushing it a little bit, but we'll see. Well, you're, you're young, so you're going to bounce back quick, mm -hmm. you know? Us, For sure. us, and I don't want to push it too fast. No, you don't. Us old no. people takes a little longer, so that's good. Take advantage of your age. <laughs> Take it. Don't push it. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, are, there, are there any talks about a fight on the horizon for you when you make your return, or it's still too premature to even think about that kind of stuff? I mean, I think I think division wise and like opponent wise, aside from me wanting that 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 fight back, um, I don't think that it's it doesn't even make sense to talk about you know if I don't get the rematch, then who would I fight? Because right. this division, the division is changing so much. I mean, you just saw, you know, Cynthia Cavillo and Jessica, I like that fight changed a lot. I'm sure in the division and sure. you know, there's a lot of fights happening and they're, they're getting consistent with the fights coming on and, and there's going to be more girls. So, uh, it's going to be changing and, and opponents are going to be changing. So True. it kind of is difficult to just be like, yeah, let's fight this one. Cause yeah. you never know that one person could switch in the rankings and you might not want to fight that person. So we'll see. That's true. That is true. Uh, a lot of changes. I was actually surprised sure. at the the outcome of the Jessica I fight last weekend. I mean, I know they're both scrappers, and, and yeah. I I enjoy watching them both fight. They're both mentally strong. Mm -hmm. uh, I genuinely enjoy watching them both fight. So, um, I I don't know. I wasn't I wasn't surprised either way. You know, oh. like it was, didn't bother me either way. It's a good fight. It, got it very entertaining. Good. Yeah, very entertaining. for sure. You know, I, I, I'm always like in the loop of what's going on, like with mm -hmm. fans and what people are saying about the, you know, the upcoming cards and stuff like that. And I got to say, I watch them all, but, um, you know, no, not a lot of people were too thrilled with the card, you know, like the upcoming, you know, they were like, eh, mm -hmm. that was a great card. The first three fights, three knockouts in a row under a minute each fight. It was exciting. You know, you don't see that. I think it was the first time in UFC history that ever happened. Yeah, I know. Um, I didn't get to watch the entire card. My service was not not the greatest, but there was a few that I definitely was like intrigued to watch. Was that one? Um, and then obviously Hannah Cyphers. You know, I always I like to give her support and and watch her fights. Um, and there was one other fight that I was really interested in watching. I can't remember which one, but so so many good ones. There was there yeah. actually was a lot of good fights. Yeah, yeah. I was I was very pleased with it. And I wanted to also ask you, like, during this whole process, I know you said your mom's your best friend, your family's very close. <laughs> yeah. Who, for you, during your road to recovery in this whole process, who's been the biggest inspiration to you, whether it be a family member, a trainer? Oh, who's, man. Who's, who's been there or the people that have been there? Mm, well, I mean, of course, my family has been there. Uh, the physical therapist that I – the team that I'm working with uh, from Team Re Rehabilitation in Wauwatosa. Uh, their entire team from the moment I got out of surgery and, you know, was on drugs and in pain and, you know, pain in their butt, they all have been so supportive. And I look forward, I never thought that I would look forward to going to therapy as much as I looked forward to going to the gym, but I did. And it's because of like the environment, um, you know, you just, they keep it like a training session. They keep it like, all right, here, we're going to work on your leg and then we're going to train. And they're not just we're only focusing on your leg. They do right. everything. So they're like, you can't, you know, you don't have to lose your conditioning. You know, we can do uh, battle ropes. We can do like, they were always trying to push me and mm -hmm. figure out ways to kind of keep my mind and stuff engaged and, 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 you know, help me get back as soon as I could. So that's been super helpful. Um, obviously, uh, the whole UFC PI, Heather, Clint, I mean, we've been working on other stuff aside from just my own me, we've been continuously working on my uh, metabolic system, my mm -hmm. blood panels, all sorts of stuff like that to continue to better me as a, an overall athlete. Um, and then, of course, uh, the person who has also been reaching out a ton is Ben Askren. Um, yeah. You know, he, he stayed really connected, checked on me every once in a while, you know, is like, here, here's some books. And, and I've been bugging him. I'm like, every time I finish a book, I'm like, hey, I need another book. Hey, I need another <laughs> book. He's like, whoa, 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 we got to talk about what this one, you know. <laughs> We got to talk about what you learned in this one. Um, so that was cool. And actually that was the first training session I had back was, was working with him. So um, I, uh, yeah, my family and, and it's all, it's been really helpful for, I mean, all those people in it. That's amazing. Actually, I had yeah. a, 
I have a lot of fans that have been reaching out to me before the episodes. I, I reach out and I say, Hey, mm -hmm. let me have it. What do you want me to ask? You know, but uh, since Askren came up, uh, one of the fans asked, do you know, has he mentioned when he'll be making a return, when his next fight will be? Um, I don't know if he'll ever make a return and mm -hmm. that's not my business to share. Uh, I, do know, I do know that he has a surgery coming up yep. uh, that he's spoken about. You know, I okay. think his surgery, I think he stated that it's like September 1st or something. He's having hip surgery. So, oh, okay. Wow. Uh, I don't quote me on that date, but I think it's, it's close to that. Um, okay. He's going to be having hip surgery. So, I mean, honestly, he had a great career. He's a great coach. He's got a full time, multiple gyms. He's great with kids. Like, why, do, why does he need to return? You know, he's he has a whole entire career and a whole entire um, platform that he's created for himself. And honestly, I think that uh, whatever he decides to do, I think is that's obviously up to him. But I'd sure appreciate it if he he just he just stayed my coach and, and continued to do that with me. <laughs> well, we definitely the selfish side of me. Well, I, I definitely want to wish him good luck with that and uh, sure. and a speedy recovery after it happens for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I was getting, uh, I got a lot of questions popping up for you too. So I want to give the fans a little time to interact with you as well. Um, one of the questions was, is there a change in weight class in the future? Do you see yourself changing weight classes eventually throughout your career? Um, I've changed once I went from 115 to 125 and that was because of my metabolic, uh, damage that I had from pre previous cuts. Uh, that's been an ever going process. It's still in process. Um, for females, our cuts are, it's, it's difficult. It messes up everything in your life, <laughs> everything in your life. Um, so right now, you know, 125 is, is good. I'm already, you know, even since surgery and walking around, I've been really consistently trying to stay at a weight where I'm like, okay, I'm like seven pounds away from being able to like start a camp and start a cut. Um, mm -hmm. so that's been really good for me, especially with like how I'm out of season and out of camp. Um, so right now I'm, I'm happy with 125 and who knows, maybe one day I'll fight at 115 again. And you know, if the right fight comes along and it's a short notice fight, I wouldn't mind fighting at 35 if it's the right <laughs> opponent, but that's not a division that I'm like, Oh yeah, let me fight at 135 because those <laughs> girls are big. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, every time you go up a weight class, you go up, like, not just, you're not just going to 35. You're like, girls are walking around at 55, sometimes even 60. True. So it's like, if you go up, then you have to put on that much more size and then you still have to cut. So it's like how, you know. Yeah, I could see that. Because everybody cuts that. weight. I mean, for the most part. I mean, there's a select mm -hmm. few that don't, um, but for the most part, everybody cuts weight. So it's just be doing the same thing in a different weight class. Yeah. I mean, you could pull a James Krause and just bump up in 24 hours to like two weight divisions. <laughs> <laughs> James Krause is a gangster. I yeah, love watching him fight. It's great. He actually, uh, he, he, was, uh, he was on the podcast and he also guest co-hosts with me one night too, which was okay. a lot of fun. He's a cool okay. dude. He's a very yeah, cool I dude. Yeah, I actually, um, I sent him a message. I was like, hey, I might be driving through uh, and I would like to make a little detour um, to go train with him, but I probably won't do that on this trip. I'll probably do it on my, my next trip out, but. Um, I definitely am planning on going out to, to just get some working with him. Cause he's, he's, he's got a really good mind for this sport. Yeah. He's an intelligent guy. He does a lot of real estate sure. on the side too. He's got, he's definitely mm -hmm. got a I shit picked his out. brain a few times. I, uh, I, sure. I've messed with him. I'm like, Hey, <laughs> teach me some of your little, your little knowledge. <laughs> That's right. He, he's, mm -hmm. he's definitely in, in, uh, in it for the long haul to make money and oh, have, yeah, a, for have sure. a nice, uh, a nice established lifestyle for himself. So he's, he's doing great. Mm -hmm. Um, so, Another question, uh, when given the opportunity to fight again, uh, would you prefer to wait until there's a crowd or if there's still no crowd, would you hop on, uh, hop on to that opportunity as well? Uh, I honestly don't care. I mean, mm -hmm. I do love the energy from the crowd, but at the same time, I, when I watch the fights right now, it reminds me of when I fought on the contender series. It just seems that more, that much more raw mm -hmm. and it just seems kind of a little bit more brutal because you can hear everything. Um, I don't mind either way, you know, a fight is a fight and we are getting paid this, you know, we're going to get paid regardless and it's still being broadcasted for, for the world to see. Um, so I think whether the fans can be there live or be watching from their home in their couch, on their pajamas, on their couch, in their pajamas, um, I'm totally fine with that too. 
It is pretty nice, actually. It is lovely. I'm like, yeah. when I get the opportunity to go to the fights, I love going because oh, sure. I do enjoy watching them close. But at the same time, I'm like, man, nothing beats pajamas and coffee <laughs> on the couch. Oh, yeah. It. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been different. You know, what do you think? Um, like, uh, how can I put this? Well, because they have Fight Island coming up. So obviously, mm -hmm. you know, it's still going to be pretty much the same format. Um, if you if you're given the opportunity to uh, if they still have, let's say, extend the contract and it goes a little further, because I know they're going to do some in Vegas after mm -hmm. Fight Island. Uh, would you hop on that opportunity to fight in Dubai? Mm, I, w I would. I mean, like, if that's my option. Sure. But sure. I would love to. I'd rather fight in Vegas. <laughs> Um, just because it's close, you know, you have mm -hmm. everything there. The PI is already there. Um, it's definitely a, more of a home for me, but I don't mind traveling either. That's what's up. Yeah. I yeah. think that'd be pretty cool. You know, I think, uh, that it, it would be cool, you know, to be able to say that you fought on an Island. Like, yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. Fight Island. I, you know, it's going to go exactly. down in, in UFC history, this fight Island, mm -hmm. you know, this pandemic will always be remembered. So, you know, especially for fighters that, I mean, it's what a story to tell. <laughs> If you were able yeah, to who fight. doesn't want to be a part of that? Yeah, for sure. You know, I think that that'd be pretty badass. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some more. Is your feud with Paige Van Zant still ongoing, or is it squashed? I don't, I don't care either way. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of like a hard one to answer because, like, if given the opportunity to fight her, I'd be like, yes, in a heartbeat. But yeah. I'm never gonna get that opportunity because it's just not gonna happen. So. I don't worry about things that I can't control and I definitely mm -hmm. can't control her ability to want to fight. So true. If you to guys, me it's kind of, it can mean it's kind of over. It's over. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was going to say, if you guys, I'm sure she still has a little bit of a grudge for me. It's all right. How'd that all start? Um, I think it started by me wanting to fight her, <laughs> honestly, okay. you know, and just not, not stopping, you know, I was just persistent and wanting to fight her. And, mm -hmm. uh, made myself heard and she didn't like that and it just kind of went on from there yeah you know i think it's a it's a compliment when somebody wants to fight you in this game you mm -hmm. know that says that you're doing something right people want to fight you for so. sure yeah she's definitely doing the the platform and the the name and the social media and all of that that's definitely she's she's got that going for sure mm -hmm. and, and who doesn't want to be a part of you know someone who fights that so um yeah of course, I'm not just going to fight someone who I'm like, oh, well, you suck and you're not, you, nobody even knows who you are. Instead, it's like, all right, everybody in the world knows who Paige Van Zandt is right. and I can beat you. So why would, you know, why wouldn't I want that? What makes you think that you could beat her? Oh, man. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> that's like, a, that's like a hard question to answer. It's easier to be like, what makes me think that I can't like. Yeah. That's a, that's an easier answer, and there's the answer to that is nothing. Like, there is no reason why I wouldn't beat her. Mm -hmm. Would you? Would you? Uh, do you feel it would be a knockout or a submission? Uh, would Would it end quickly? Um, I have a feeling it'd be a TKO. You know, I okay. don't think that she wants to. She, I don't think she can stand the power. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, she definitely wants to protect her face, and that wouldn't go well for her. Deal. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for answering. Yeah. That. <laughs> Like I'm trying to figure out how to answer that. I'm like in a different way that I already have. I'm like, I've already said all these things before. I'm like trying to give another answer. Nah, that was, that was good. <laughs> I, I'm trying to give all the fans what they want to hear. For so sure. thank you for answering. I appreciate yeah. that. Um, let's see. Okay. An Amanda Nunez question came up. Uh, what do you think of Amanda Nunez possibly uh, retiring from women's MMA and your thoughts on if she is the greatest of all time? Uh, there's without a doubt she's one of the best in the world, um, especially females. She mm -hmm. is just – she's dominant. She's technical. And, you know, she, she definitely is one of the greatest in the sport of women's MMA. Um, as far as her retiring, I don't, I don't see why – I don't have an opinion either way. You know, mm -hmm. I think that she's accomplished. Like, if that's what she wants to do, if she, you know, wants to start her family, if that's what they want to do uh, – that's not my opinion. To, like, I shouldn't have an opinion on that. I think she's a great fighter. Um, I think the division will definitely change without her. Right. Um, I don't think it'll be as technical, especially the 145 division. There is nobody there anymore. You know, like, there's nobody. Like, it'll be held, and it'll it'll switch hands a couple of times, but there's not a lot of women in the 145 division. Mm -hmm. 
And then as far as 135 goes, I think that off, opens up an opportunity for the other girls in the division. Um, but like I said, she's accomplished so much. She's one of the greatest in the world. So if she wants to retire, good for her. Let her retire oh. and, and start her family and enjoy her life the way she wants to live it. 100%. Yeah, I mean, she's beat everybody and not just yeah. by decision either. I mean, beat right. you know, beat the best. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, she's, she's just this unbelievable talent. Uh, she one of the you know one of the women you look up to uh, you know as a young fighter yourself coming up. You know I've I've looked up to a lot of fighters. Uh, there's no one specific fighter that I've looked right. up to, um, especially women. Like I try to pick and choose like certain things, um, but this sport is changing so much that you know when you see something from one fighter you're like oh that's great let me let me use that and you see something from someone else so it's hard to just say that yeah you're the one that I look up to throughout my career. It's kind of like picking and choosing from every single fighter. So that's what's up. And uh, we got some here in the chat as well. Let's see. Uh, somebody's asking if you'll be their date at the, at a wedding at his brother's <laughs> wedding and he'll donate $10,000 to a charity of your choice. Oh, there it so is. Sweet. I'm not even kidding. There it is. Now this is but from why are you gonna put that kind of pressure on me. A lot of, a lot of pressure right there. You you can answer that pressure. later. You can answer that <laughs> later. Send me an email. Send me send me a DM. <laughs> send a DM. There you go. See? All I could do, people, is open the door. I can't, I can't promise a date, <laughs> but uh, but but we should figure out the charity. <laughs> Maybe a a COVID nineteen Zoom date. There you go. Okay? Could make life for <laughs> make life easy for everybody. You gotta find a happy medium. Always, always, yes. For sure. What, what have you been doing during the quarantine, as far as like? Training, well, obviously not training, more recovery, but how, how has life been for you during this whole craziness? Hmm, well, so I had surgery February, and then in March, the virus kind of started, and um, I was in my apartment, and then I kind of got all freaked out, and I was like, all right, I'm coming home, Mom, Dad, <laughs> I'm like, make room. Um, so I went home for like the first I was planning on only going for like a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. but the first day that I showed up, I also got two dogs. <laughs> <laughs> so I was definitely like, um, the, like the, so one of the quarantine stereotypes. I was like that person that got the dog. I'm like, I got puppies guys. Oh, like, you were one of those. This is all we need. <laughs> <laughs> so I got two dogs. I got two miniature Huskies. Um, so we obviously stayed at the house, my parents' house a lot longer than I was like expecting. Um, I also was like looking for a house with a yard because my apartment does not allow for dogs. <laughs> so I kind of got the cart before the horse, but, um, <laughs> well, now yeah, you so... get the, uh, get the, the, uh, what do you call the, uh, the vest for the dog, get the paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. Well now I just do it the right way. I don't want to say that I need them. Like, you know, I want them for my, my, my life, but True. yeah. Um, so I, so I moved into a house with a yard and I have two dogs now and I've just been going to physical therapy all the time and reading a lot and spending time with the family nice. and traveling. So That's what's up. I'm trying to fill up my time and keep myself, uh, consistent training, motivated. Uh, actually it's, it's, it's actually more of a challenge to keep myself like calm down rather than motivated because I'm like, <laughs> I gotta go, 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 go. And everybody's like, no, chill. Like, you're gonna hurt slow yourself. down, slow <laughs> yeah. down there. Yeah, I get a little bit excited. So, uh, yeah. Where the nickname the barber come from? I mean, uh, the future. The future. Oh, I, was I like, like the barber, barber though. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, that kind of came from like family, friends. Okay. Just kind of came about. I didn't pick it. It just kind of stuck. <laughs> um, there's no real exciting story, but I think it fits pretty well. You know, I I like, like to it. think of it as like. You know, no matter how far you go, there's always like the future. There's always like something else, something more. Um, and especially with me being so young, like I think it's pretty right. fitting right now. That is pretty awesome. I like it. Yeah, I called you the barber. <laughs> Don't forget that now. <laughs> That's fitting too. I'm going a lot. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> First cut of all, somebody's... I cannot cut hair. I cannot cut hair <laughs> to save my life. Shave your opponent's oh. head after each fight, you know. Fact, I did actually when I was little. Um, my grandfather only had like a little bit of hair left. <laughs> he was taking an hour time and I cut it off. So like <laughs> that was that was the rest of his hair. It was gone. So I mean it oh, kind of fits. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Well, you never know. It could be a few. I was that bad gimmick. kid. 
I was that bad kid. I cut his hair and painted his toenails. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm sure he had a pretty good sense of humor about it though. I was five. Oh yeah. You can get away with everything at five. I got away with it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. If you were like, yeah, it was like 18. I'd be like, Whoa, wait a minute. Hold on, Macy. Hold on. <laughs> what? <laughs> No, I was like five. Terrence uh, wants to know, uh, do you see yourself fighting Zhang after winning the 125 belt? If 115 is an option, then yeah, I'd yeah. totally be down to do that. Yeah, for sure. That's what's up. I like that. I like that a lot. So what's uh, what's next for you? What's, uh, you know, after your travel uh, back to Wisconsin, what do you have planned? Yeah, so um, I drive back. I leave tomorrow morning. I'm actually stopping in Kansas. Uh, Long MacArthur is um, a Ford dealership. And they, when I got injured, they took my truck and traded it because my truck was lifted. Mm -hmm. And so I, can't, I couldn't get in and out of it. So they took oh. my truck and they wrapped it. And it is like a total, like, I, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a, like a Kyle truck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, it looks okay. like some some little country boy should be coming out of that truck and i'm like it's it's extra it's very oh. extra but i love it and so i'm picking that up tomorrow uh and it has like all my sponsors on the truck so it's got like monster energy and toyo tires and long macarthur and a bunch of um a bunch of the logos from the people that are on my on my team um so i'm picking that up and then i'm driving to wisconsin and I'm going to get back to work, get back to training. Uh, I just talked to Ben, and we're going to get get to work on, I think I get home Thursday night, so we'll probably start training on Friday. Um, I'm just get back to work. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, post some pics of that truck. I'm really interested in seeing what <laughs> well, it looks like. I have tons of pictures. I just didn't want to share them yet because I'm like, <laughs> I got to have everybody see this this extraness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We got to get you an MMA Uncensored uh, sticker to put on there. <laughs> sure <laughs> that would be it's it's, it's a lot <laughs> i can't wait to see it that's pretty okay. cool that's that's cool that they did that too for sure i'm i'm super excited and, and honored to have them on my team you know they they've mm -hmm. taken really good care of me they sent me out a brand new car um that's it like they just sent me a new car and they'd like here we'll take your truck we'll take care of it we'll do the maintenance on it i mean wow. i couldn't ask for a better support team from them uh that's that's huge you know because a one-legged cripple. I was like not able to get in my own vehicle. I'm like, I, I can't like, I'll, I'll tear my other leg just trying to get in my own truck. Um, so yeah, they've taken really good care of me for sure. Amazing. Any, uh, do you want to shout out your sponsors? Go for it. I mean, I kind of, I kind of already did, uh, obviously cool. long MacArthur, uh, monster energy, Toyo mm -hmm. tires, um, obviously team rehabilitation in Wauwatosa. They've helped me out. Um, method flow has been on my team. Gosh, there's a there's a lot, and I'm probably gonna mess mess them up. Uh, recent partnership is Green Mountain Grills. Okay. And I'm trying to think of a couple other ones. If I miss them, you'll just have to look at my truck. <laughs> yes, you're gonna see it all over that. <laughs> you'll just have to see it when I drive by. <laughs> oh yeah. Now you got to get a train horn on that sucker if you don't already have oh, one. Oh dear, I've seen those. Those are those are yeah, that fit. I think that so truck because would, like be perfect with it. You know, if somebody hears the train horn from like a couple of traffic <laughs> lights down, they're going to say the future is coming. Oh, they're going to know about it. They're going to know ahead of time. They're going to say future's that was, like, on the its one way. Thing I'm like, I feel like I'm going to be pointed out so hard in that in that truck. Yeah. I'm like, I couldn't possibly put my name on it, and everybody wanted me to put the name on it, so I just put the future on it. Oh. Um, You'll get stopped everywhere. Oh man, they're like, hey, do you got some monsters in that truck of yours? Because <laughs> like that's Red what Bull. I look like. I look like a, a monster delivery vehicle. <laughs> Good. I, I could use yeah. some monsters myself. I'll hook you up if I ever see you in person. Damn right. Yeah, I'm sure For we sure. will. I'll be I'll be popping up when you least expect it. Like, oh, I know that guy. Oh, hey. He's What's got up? the accent. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> Can't forget this accent. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule for being on MMA on set. So this was awesome talking to this you. This was fun. Yeah. Look, you are invited back anytime you like. Thanks. You have an open invitation. I'm glad we got to <laughs> do it. Thank you so much. Chris was telling me, did you have surgery or something a couple of weeks ago? Because I know we tried to connect a few weeks ago. Oh. <laughs> so I had, well, obviously I had my knee surgery, but I just, last week I was traveling mm -hmm. and I was driving out here, but I just had my wisdom teeth pulled last week. All four? So, 
Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Hollywood smile in Las Vegas hooked me up and <laughs> nice. yanked my teeth out of my head. <laughs> wow. What what was yeah. uh, what was worse, ACL or getting those wisdom teeth filled? <laughs> Honestly, everyone's like, "How did you come out of that surgery okay?" Like the the first day, I don't remember the day of wh- like when I had my teeth pulled. Yeah. My friend helped me get out of the office and into the apartment and stuff. So she she took care of me and then um it's been super easy. Like they gave me antibiotics and they gave me a little bit of painkillers and I was fine. I was, I looked like a freaking chipmunk though for like days, like the whole week. I was like, my cheeks were like, um, (laughs) honestly though, like the roller coaster of the the mental side of the ACL, like Mm -hmm. that's been a longer process. I don't know. I, I feel like I've had enough surgeries and I'm like, eh, here we go. What's another surgery, right? They're just going to hack me to pieces. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right. Hey, baby, you keep on ticking. By the end, I'm going to be a transformer, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, then you'd really be knocking people out. Exactly. Ooh. That's what I'm going for. And you got the truck already, so that's perfect. Oh, man. <laughs> that's, yeah. that, is, that is awesome. So what time do you leave tomorrow? Uh, I leave at 5 in the morning. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to try yeah. to get to Kansas in time. I have, I'm going to do a podcast and some, some photos with them and then uh make my way the rest of the way that is awesome well i wish you a safe trip and for our viewers of course uh ig obviously at macy barber uh so please follow macy she's awesome yes as you can see and she's a pretty damn good fighter too so you definitely want to follow her absolutely my pleasure macy thank you again safe travels and uh oh also i want to send you out a mma uncensored t-shirt uh, so just okay. let Chris know whatever address you want it sent to, and we'll get that sent out to you. For sure. I'll do that. Thank you again. Yeah, my pleasure, Macy. Have a good na- rest of your night. Uh, you for you? Yeah, ah. it's pretty dark yeah. over here right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, it's still daylight out here. So. Oh, uh, yeah. East Coast, cool. Florida. It's, uh, it's yeah, it. it's pretty sun's, dark out there. Sun's gone. All right. Well, have yeah. a good rest of your night. And Thank I'll you. Talk you too. To you later. Sounds Bye. good. Bye bye. That's Macy Barber, everyone. The future. Future was here. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that portion of the interview. I tried to get as many uh, the questions as I can. I'm always trying to get you guys involved as much as I can. I do have multiple streams going at the same time, so I just want to make sure that I get uh, as, as much as I can for you guys uh, for the appropriate amount of time that we have our guest on. Uh, we're get, we ended a little early, uh, 9 p.m. on ex- um, Eastern time. I'm expecting WWE Hall of Famer, the Godfather, Charles Wright, he's going to be coming on the podcast next. Uh, so we do have a little time to mess around till uh, till he gets on the show. So I don't normally do this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna roll the dice. I'm gonna give an opportunity for a fan to call in, random fan to call in right now. Let's just talk about it. Let's talk about some MMA, whatever you want to talk about. Let's talk about it. If you have questions, I'll answer them, and you could be on the live experience, and you could tell your friends and family. If you guys are interested in that, I'm going to put the link in the chat right now. I can only probably take one caller, maybe two. We'll see. I'm trying to get the Godfather uh, in a little earlier. We'll see if see if he'll uh, pop in a little earlier. But I'm I'm thinking that we could do this. So let's uh, let's roll the dice here. But uh, I definitely hope that you guys uh, enjoyed uh, hearing Macy Barber. She's uh, she's awesome, as you can tell. Super sweet, super nice. So I just dropped the link in the in the uh, chat. So click, follow the instructions, and you too could be a part of MMA Uncensored. I like to give back to the fans every now and then because you guys are the best. I super appreciate you guys, of course. Uh, but while we're waiting, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Uh, obviously, uh, we want to shout out Nick and Nate Diaz with Game Up Nutrition for all your CBD needs, all your nutritional needs, and you get 10% off if you use the code MMA Uncensored. So uh, check them out because they got some awesome product there. Uh, CBD products, great. Uh Uh-oh, we got a caller calling in. Let's do it. Please, I hope hope this guy doesn't curse me out for no good reason. (laughs) What's up? Wildcard, what's up, Wildcard? Oh, what's up? Chilla, man. How you enjoying the show so far? Good. Awesome, dude. Awesome. I just seen the Macy Barber interview. Did you get to see the whole thing? Uh, yeah, I got to see it. Uh, I tuned into the end, but I got to see a little bit of it. What did, What did you think of Macy? It was good. I wanted to ask if she was 
if she, she was interested in fighting Cynthia. Oh, okay, I'll definitely ask her um, yeah. through the DM. I'll definitely that ask would be her. A pretty good fight. Yeah, they, that would be an awesome fight. That's a good question, actually. Sorry, I missed it, but that that would be uh, a pretty cool fight to see. Yeah. Do you uh, do you currently follow MMA Uncensored on uh, uh, on IG and stuff? Yeah, on IG. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for your support, man. That's You're awesome. Welcome, man. I appreciate um, you, man. Big fan of the the page. Thank you very much, man. Yeah, we work hard, man. Me and Chris work our butt off, and we always try to get as much content as we can out there. Uh, just keep you guys, you know, happy, and uh, we're all interacting with one another, and uh, just trying to get the best guests that we possibly can each and every week, man. So thank you again for your support. I appreciate it. That's good. I was gonna tell you, you should try to get Yoel on the show. Romero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. We could reach out to him and uh, and see. We reach out to a lot of fighters, so like you know. It, you know, it depends on everybody's schedule, you know, and stuff like that. But uh, sometimes we get quick responses and other times it takes a couple of months before we get a response. It just really depends. But we're constantly reaching out to people. But I'll double check if we reached out to you well. And, uh, you All know, right. we'll definitely try to get him on, man. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah, I met him actually recently. Oh, no kidding. Where at? Um, he was in, He came to my hometown for a little while to get away. And some somebody I knew was his neighbor, and he let me. He was actually nice enough to let me meet him. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, seems like a cool Tom. dude. I never met him yeah, in he's person. A really nice guy. That's awesome, man. Good stuff. Yeah. He, he even signed my gloves. I'll show you, buddy. Let's take a look. Oh, good. Oh, you got orange walls, bro. I like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that's dope, man. Yeah. Look. I have his hat, too. Hey, nice, man. That's so, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Yo, that is, that is awesome, man. Yeah. I'm going to... Uh, so I want to thank you for calling in. I'm going to give somebody else a, a chance as well. But right, yo, again, thank you so much for your support. And thank you for calling in. It was cool talking to you. All right, man. Good talking to you. Thanks, brother. Take All care. Right, Bet. Bye. Bye. Later, bro. All right. Let's see who else we got next. Who's up here? Oh, I, I see this guy in the chat. Aman, what's up, man? <laughs> hey. Yeah, I'm How good. How are you doing? Welcome, you? welcome to MMA Uncensored Live, bro. You are live. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Where are you I, from? I Where are you calling in from? I'm Guyana. Oh, that's what's in up. South America. Yo, yeah. thank, thanks for um, calling in, man. I didn't get to see the first um, part of the Macy Barber interview, so I didn't get to see like if you asked um, my questions. Did you tell her she was mad cute? I saw it. I saw it. But we let. I, le I left it. I let it be. You know, I try to keep it. You know, even keel sometimes. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure she already knows she's mad cute. She knows she's mad cute. Yeah. I'm sure she does. Hey, um, yeah. Did Did you ask her any of my questions? Like, I, I asked um if if like she would if she would take a, a contract with like one championship. Uh, I didn't get to that one. Uh, the questions I did ask though, which I I know I had some. I actually had a, quite a few questions that came in from you on IG, right? Yeah. You yeah. had an Okay, perfect. So now I know exactly uh, who you are. Yeah, the ones I did ask. Um. The change in weight class, um, if she if she preferred to fight in front of a crowd or not, uh, Paige Van Zant feud, um, Amanda Nunez, who who she thinks the greatest of all time is, and she said Amanda's one of them. Uh, but the she the had... change in weight class, I asked, I asked that one. Okay, cool. Uh, she said she probably wouldn't go to one thirty five. She wouldn't rule it out, but she probably wouldn't because the girls are real big up there. They got to cut weight. She's got to jump weight, so. Uh, it looks like for her, it sounds like 115, 125. Yeah. Okay. I, I just want to know because, like, um, I was asked, like, if, if she, if, what was the goal for her? Like, whether it was like making the money or breaking the records or stuff like that. Did she answer that one or? Uh, no, I don't think we got to that. But okay. what she did say, she's 22. She's got, you know, a long future ahead. She definitely wants to fight. 
Uh, she yeah. does want to take big fights. She wants to get, you know, name fighters. Uh, so it sounds yeah. to me I like know she she's... wants to win the title. <laughs> yeah, who doesn't, right, bro? We, I think we all want to win the title one one, one point in our career. Yeah, that's true. You yeah, know, that's, <laughs> that's all. You follow a lot yeah. of MMA? Um, on and off, really, like, bef- like when I was younger, I like on and off. I used to follow mm-hmm. more wrestling. Okay. But like now I'm leaning more to um to MMA than wrestling. Yeah. That's what's up. You know we got the, you talk about like that's, WWE that's stuff? Wrestling is kind of gone. Yeah, let's be honest, wrestling kind of, you know, really shifted down. Do you like the attitude ever? But you know, they have a lot of new companies and so like AEW. Yeah. I I love the attitude era. The, I I found like um over the past like 3 years, WWE standards have really dropped. It's been a big change. It's been a very yeah. big change. We got the Godfather coming on a little bit. Did you know that? Yeah, I, yeah, I heard. Yeah, he he's a cool dude. Uh, I spoke to him. That. Yeah, I spoke to him earlier. He's a real cool guy, man. So I think it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a good interview. Yeah, I I do I do like old wrestlers a lot. I I do like some new wrestlers, but I, I find they're not um either they're not being utilized or like I don't know. The I I find I find because like like. For example, I was talking to my friends today about um Joe, Samoa Joe, mm-hmm. and he's he's a commentator to know, which is which is like so absurd because he's so talented. It was mm-hmm. like which is ridiculous to me. But you think he's milking an injury or something like that? Yes, yeah, so I I just feel they're they're underutilized. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't think so because, well, I mean they they do get injured a lot in in the sport, so like. But but I, I I just feel like a lot of them were underutilized, mm-hmm. and and I don't think fans really appreciate that. Yeah, I think because they have a lot of talent, you know. I think that's why they started mixing a lot of wrestlers into yeah. NXT from the from the the main card. You know, I think that they they just have so much I, talent. Yeah, that they I, do I that. also feel like the main the main. Yeah, I always feel like the main roster is overbooked. Like there's too much, there's too much um, wrestlers in that in that. On like Raw and SmackDown, and not yeah. so much on, on NXT. True, very true. Yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully things will change on that end. But AEW is taking full advantage of it. You know, they're really yeah, uh, yeah they are. <laughs> they're toting the line. I like it, man. Something different, and they could get away with it right now. So I say, go for it. Yeah. Well, thanks yeah. for calling in, brother. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Thank you for your support yeah, and following, and uh, thanks for reaching out on IG, man. Yeah. No problem. All right, cool. All right, my man. Yeah. Have a good one. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we're doing it. You know, sometimes it's nice. We, we like to give back to the fans and, and get you guys a part of it. Uh, for You know, for instances like this where we have, um, you know, a little uh, a little gap in between guests, I like doing it. You know, it's a little free-for-all. So feel free to click on the link in the chat. You can call in, ask questions, and, uh, you know, we'll have some fun. But, uh, yeah, Godfather will be on soon. WWE Hall of Famer, Charles Wright, a.k.a. The Godfather, a.k.a. Papa Shango uh super cool dude you should follow him on ig the godfather i mean that's probably one of the coolest handles you could have on instagram the godfather uh check him out 420 friendly uh he does something called medicated cardio so he smokes weed and does cardio boxing training stuff like that and he's just a chill dude just a chill a guy i could definitely hang with just a cool guy uh, also, we got some awesome shirts on sale, too, and apparel. Obviously, you can see right here by Mike Tyson T, representing Brooklyn, New York, Mike Tyson. Uh, if you go on MMAuncensored.net, uh, you could use the code USA or Joe. That's my personal code uh, for, uh, I think you get 10 or 15% off, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so you definitely want to uh, hit us up on there. We got a ton of different apparel Rev gear, uh, we got a lot of, uh, you know, different fight gear, gloves, wraps, bags, bunch of stuff. So you could definitely uh, check that out and take advantage of the discounts that we offer. Um, and then also, again, follow us on IG, MMA Uncensored, double underscore. Uh, so, yeah, we had, uh, if you if you missed last week's episode, uh, we had Sugar Sean O'Malley on last week. So for the people that are uh, listening, uh, Sugar Sean came on. He's out there in his hometown, Arizona. Uh, he's got this awesome slingshot that he drives around town with, and uh, he's a cool dude. We did about 30 minutes with him last week. Uh, he talked about his training. Uh, he talked about being the next big thing. You know, He feels he's going to be bigger than Conor McGregor one day. He's going to be an A-list celebrity 
and he's going to win the world championship. You know, that's uh, coming straight from him. He firmly believes in himself, and and why not? I think we should all believe in ourselves with that kind of confidence. You know, that was a very good interview. Uh, so definitely check that out. And then we also, uh, for you guys that are interested in, of course, MMA, celebrity MMA is coming soon. Damon Feldman was on, uh, who is the CEO of Celebrity Boxing, and now starting in November 2020, he's going to be bringing Celebrity MMA to the USA. So stay tuned for that. There are A-list celebrities. I cannot mention names right now, but A-list celebrities, A-list musicians, and athletes, professional athletes, will be competing in MMA celebrity style. So uh, stay tuned for that because that's going to be pretty friggin' crazy. Uh and that's that. Oh, check it out. Tyson shirt. Somebody wants a Tyson shirt. Okay, deal. Tyson shirts, baby. They're selling like hotcakes. We just got them in this color. It's like an off blue, and then we got white. So we got white with the blue. Actually, I like the white better. The white is really nice with the blue lettering. It's just clean, you know, fresh pair of jeans, clean white sneakers, you know, fresh, baby. That's the way we like to keep it. Got to keep it fresh at all times. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well because – uh, you get to see all the past interviews. We did some funny ones. I did one with Paulie Malinaji. Uh, hilarious. Hilarious. He talks quite a bit about Dana White, his experience with Conor McGregor. You got to hear it. It is – he's just – he brings it, man. He he just speaks his mind. Very entertaining interview. We also had uh, bare, new, newly signed bare-knuckle fighter Hector Lombard on as well. He talks a lot of politics. He talks a lot of religion. He talks about sex. He pretty much brought up every topic possible, and he speaks his mind as well. So another good interview you want to check out. Uh, we had Shannon Briggs on as well. Shannon Briggs also newly signed to Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. I hear that the next pay-per-view is going to be July 24th, I believe, or 26th. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Just going off memory. It's going to be in South Florida. And it's supposed to be really good. You know, it's supposed to be a very, very good card. They haven't announced it yet, but from what I'm hearing in the background, there's going to be quite a bit of surprises on that card. Uh, I'm thinking there's going to be, well, there has been confirmed a live audience. Not sure if it's going to be 100%, 50%, 25%. I don't know those numbers, uh, but they did confirm it will be in front of a live audience. So I think it's worth the wait. They were supposed to do one in June and then pulled back and decided to do the live audience instead, which... I think makes a lot more sense for the promotion. So that's going to be really interesting to see as well. Uh, and then we also we also had David Feldman on as well, uh, president and CEO of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. Uh, he broke news on, on the show as well. And then we also encourage uh, female influencers on the show as well. We've had uh, Playboy model Holly Joe. She was on a few weeks ago. Uh, we had Christine Curran from Dining Divas TV. Uh, Kier Malor, who's a model uh, who does a lot of work with the environment, beach cleanup and stuff like that. So, you know, it's not only just about MMA, but we want to uh, also uh, encourage the female influencers as well to be on the podcast because, you know, it's always good to cross promote, get the word out uh, and, and help each other out, you know, and I think that's really important. And I want to do my best to give back to the to the fans that support us. You know, we're closing in on 400,000 followers on IG. And, uh, you know, I can't thank you guys enough. It's awesome. You know, I see the banter on the, on the, on some of the posts and it's funny. That's funny. Somebody made fun of me today and I laughed at all. You know, what are you going to do? I don't fight with people online, but, uh, you know, it's fun. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, we had a bunch of other guests on too. Uh, a lot of people that'll surprise you have a big surprise coming up for next week as well, uh, which is going to be a lot of fun. Can't say anything yet. I'm going to announce it on Friday. I will tell you that. I'm going to announce it. Next week's guest is on Friday. Uh, came to a little bit of a shock to me. It was unexpected, but it's going to be really cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, she's a very interesting woman. Uh, she has some good stories, I'm sure. And uh, a very, very big fan of mixed martial arts. Uh, has done a lot of work in the UFC, a lot of work with wrestling, uh, and WWE. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Haven't picked out my second hour guest yet got a couple of people in mind uh so we'll see if there's anybody that you guys want to see on the podcast uh you could drop a message right now in the chat uh you could send me a dm uh on ig at joe Miggs. you could also send it to mma on sensors uh 
DM box as well on IG or on Facebook. Let us know because we're constantly reaching out to people to be on the show. We want to highlight, of course, MMA, but we also want to highlight wrestling, boxing, any kind of combat sport, you know, uh, and any kind of entertainment. You know, we, we want to kind of, you know, mix those two together, have some fun. You know, that's why we're going to lighten up the show today, uh, having uh, Charles Wright on because he's a lot of fun. Uh, we get to talk a little wrestling, you know, so I think that'll be pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, anytime you guys want, reach out. Uh, I do my best to answer all the DMs uh, as best as I can. So reach out. You know, I promise I will. One way or another, I'll get to you. I promise. Some days I'm really quick at it. Some days not so quick. So, but that's what happens. I also work a full-time job as well. So this is uh, this is something that I do for fun. Uh, but this is also like having a full-time job. Trust me, we work very hard behind the scenes. Uh, I want to also give a shout out to... Uh, the Bare Knuckle Hall of Fame uh, president, Scott Burt. Guy is awesome. He sent me a bunch of awesome stuff. And periodically, um, we're giving out free gifts, free prizes to our viewers. So if you have Apple Podcast, we're doing a, a current promotion right now. We've been giving away $100 for the best reviews that we pick out. So if you have Apple, you can subscribe to MMA Uncensored on Apple Podcasts right now. Once you subscribe, if you give us a five-star rating and a really bomb-ass review, uh, we pick out the reviews that we like. We'll send you 100 bucks cash. That's pretty cool. Uh, we'll also do random giveaways as well. So with the Bare Knuckle Boxing Hall of Fame, I got some cool stuff. I've already given away uh, a piece of wood from the original John Sullivan's uh, training barn from 1889. Pretty awesome stuff. Uh, we had some... Uh, original stuff from Harley Davidson, uh, bare knuckle boxing hall of fame, t-shirts, hats, uh, shot glasses. I mean, really cool stuff Scott sent out. So shout out to Scott Burt, president of bare knuckle boxing hall of fame. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, it was, it's pretty cool. So I always want to do something, uh, nice for you guys. Cause you guys show support. So it's only right that I do that, you know, and with everything going on in the world now with pandemics and, and, you know, the stuff going on with the protesting, you know, try to stay away from that stuff. And not because we're avoiding it. It's just sometimes it's good to to uh, get your mind off stuff, right? Because there's a lot of negativity going on in the world right now. Uh, although we are very passionate about the things that we stand for, which I respect a thousand percent. It's always good to kind of just like chill your mind out for a little while. If it's for a half an hour, an hour, a couple of hours, just to kind of find your inner Zen and recharge the batteries. That's, that's what I like to do with this show. You know, now's the time to forget about life, but I, I just wanted to make that point. Uh, Cause some people have asked, Hey, you know, you don't really talk about politics or you don't bring this up. You know, I want to get somebody's insight on, on that. You know, my thing is I don't want to put people in an uncomfortable situation to answer those types of questions. I think there are certain platforms to answer those questions on. This isn't the one, you know, we want to, uh, we want to keep it, about the fighters and and their story, their success story, and the things that they're uh, they're doing with their life, you know, and and what they have planned next. So, uh, to answer some of the questions uh, that I've gotten uh, in that regard, that's that's the reason why. Food all around. If you follow him on IG, you can see he's just a great guy. Uh, medicated cardio, which I'm very interested in talking about as well. He's uh, played the badass Papa Shango and the pimp himself, the Godfather. I want to bring him on WWE Hall of Famer, Charles Wright. Charles. Hey, hey, hey. what's going on, man? Everybody, what's up? How, how we doing? How we doing? Man, I'm doing great, brother. Doing great here in Vegas, you know, enjoying this lovely hot-ass weather. How hot is it right now in Las Vegas? Um, you know, it's a little cooler today. I think it was 98, 99. But it was like 104 last week. Uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, it gets hot here during the summertime. Got to drink a lot of water, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> you better drink a lot of water. <laughs> got to stay hydrated, especially when, uh, you know, there's a little marijuana involved. You got to make sure that no cotton mouth, very hydrated, because you never know when that little dry heat's going to sneak up on you. <laughs> well, believe me, I drink a lot of water just for that reason, because. I stay medicated uh, probably 24 hours a day. 24-7 medicated. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so do I. 
I'm sure. Hey, I got to tell you, I love your your IG is super entertaining, man. I I absolutely love it. The the medicated cardio. Where would you come up with that? You know what? Um, I I started. I, I really just started playing with this Instagram. I've been on it. I got verified like two three months ago. That's why I don't have a lot of followers yet. And I was on it, but I really not got got serious. Well, now I'm kind of semi retired, and I'm at home just having fun. And so I got verified. And uh, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to be me. I almost should have a reality show. I'm just being me. I'm having fun. A uh, long time ago, one thing that I've always done is cardio. And by a guy by the name of Teddy Long, who's in the WWE, me and him used to get up every morning. And sorry, I'm going to tell on you, Teddy. But we'd smoke every morning and then do like an hour of cardio. We you know, at the hotel or as soon as we checked in. And uh, we used to call it high-ass cardio. Well, I like, I, I hate saying high, I'm high, I'm high, I'm high, because then people think you're just high. So I changed it to medicated cardio. So now what I do is, uh, and I'm a little heavy right now, I'm like 300 pounds. So I'm going to drop this uh, virus got me sitting at home eating three, four meals a day. So I gained the weight. So now I'm going to start doing my cardio in the morning. And, and it's just so cool because I usually do cardio before I do my workout. I'll do an hour of cardio. And so now, I call it medicated cardio. I start smoking a couple hours before I do the show. And then I get on a bike. I get on some type of cardio and just wrap with the people while I'm smoking. It is. You better trademark that, man. I, you know what? My wife was like, you better trademark that because I've only done it a few times. And it's starting to, it's starting to, I'm going to do it tomorrow morning. I might do it tonight. You should. I, you know what? It's catching. I mean, because I'm like, I, I'm always looking for some something cool to follow, you know? So I was like, Already, I'm a fan, of course, but when I saw the whole medicated cardio skit, I'm like, yo, <laughs> he's got something here. He's definitely got something. I, you know, I got to be careful because you know how people steal shit, but uh, That's medicated what cardio, I love it. And then what I do is I'm not sitting there placed. You know, actually, I am. Um, <laughs> to me, marijuana and cannabis is more than just getting high. Um, I'm 59 years old. And some people say I don't look 59 years old. I know I don't act 59 years old. But at about 27 years old, I was a wrestler called Papa Shango. And I tried cannabis for the first time. And at that point, bro, I'm taking Vicodins, Percocets, Solomons. I can make a song out of this motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> I was taking so much shit and then, you know, uh, drinking a bottle of Jack every day. And I tried marijuana for the very first time, basically. 27 years old, tried it for the first time. Wow. And it changed my life. And if you look at some wrestlers that are my age and what they look like, and it's they're still doing the pills and they're still drinking, they're still doing all that stupid shit. And I just went to cannabis, drink a shot now and then, a beer now and then, but I'm strictly cannabis and I'm telling you it saved my life. Wow. What did you notice like the biggest change when you switched from taking the pills and, and drinking the bottle to the cannabis? What was like the biggest change? You were like, oh, wow, like this is for me. <laughs> Um, had more energy. Mm -hmm. I was more creative. Godfather was created just from my wife coming up with the ideas and me being medicated. I'm gonna say that like that word, me being <laughs> medicated and just being out there being myself. I had more energy. My life was better. I wasn't, dude, I'm no MMA fighter, but believe me, man, I used to be a mean motherfucker. I used to be, I worked with such, if you're in the MMA, you might remember one kick Nick and uh, Tommy Gladville yeah. and Alfie Anfons. All those guys worked for the club that I ran. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Chuck Liddell's brother, Dan Liddell, he mm -hmm. worked for me. And But, oh. you know, um, just everything was better, man. Just I thought more. And I, just everything was better. My back didn't hurt. My knee didn't hurt. I was more creative. Uh, more importantly, I was nicer. And I didn't you know, like George Foreman. George Foreman used to be the meanest motherfucker in the world. Yeah. And as soon as he started smiling and selling shit, everything went well. Well, now <laughs> I just enjoy life. I'm not trying to be no tough guy. I'm just enjoying life. I stay high. I enjoy myself. And just, and, and you know, and I try to stay safe. Now, hey, look, you can't beat that, man. Did you ever, uh, were you ever medicated while wrestling? Um, I, I don't I'm still under contract with them, and they're so cool with me. So I'll just say this. 
Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. Um, yes. Did That's I have up. any type of free pass from them? No. Um, but uh, I, I, you know, I stayed medicated. I've been probably medica- medicated for the last 32 years. I love it. Good for you, man. Good for you. I, You know, it was funny. I, I, I've been wanting to get involved with more wrestling. Uh, I'm a fan. I know a lot of MMA fans are fans of wrestling and vice versa, so it's a nice mix, you know. Um, and then when I, when I ran across your Instagram page, the first video that I saw was you hitting the speed bag while you were hitting the vape bag. <laughs> Do you know how hard that was to do? I'm sure. Do you know to sit there and not look at the pad and sit there and try to smoke it? I did it like five times. I probably say, oh, it was funny. Bro, I was cracking up. I'm like, look at this dude. He's just going like this. He's like, there's nothing like in the morning hitting the speed bag and the vape bag. (laughs) Smoking the camera. I'm like, I like this guy. I Uh like this guy. Oh, bro, that's just, and that's really, that's just me doing silly stuff that I do normally, you know. That That is so cool, man. Speaking so of funny. a bag, I wish I could get a bag. <laughs> I get a bag. I, I, I do these uh these vape bags that are really helpful for you. It's not the, it's not the volcano. It's called First Vape Kit, okay. and it's just really cool. I do a lot of dab hits. I don't smoke a lot of flour when I do. It's usually through a vape bag or something. Okay. Flour just doesn't get me medicated the way that I'd like to, probably because of my high tolerance. So I'm a big dabber. You know, I'm a big dabber, <laughs> but I like to press rosin. I really like to press rosin because there's no chemicals in it. Oh, that's what's up. Okay, mm-hmm. and then, then you put that in the uh, in the vaporizer, and then get the smoke into the bag. Is that how it works? Basically, it's like a heat gun. Okay. And then you set the heat gun at 400, 420 degrees, and then he has this fixture that goes on a mouthpiece, and then the heat goes through it, blows the bag up with Mm -hmm. nothing but THC. You get nothing but the positive. It leaves all the negative there. You know, when when you put the weed in there, it's green. When you take it out, it's brown. So you take just the positives. So it's a different high. It's a healthy high. Mm-hmm. And you're not getting the chemicals, you're not getting the fur, you're not getting the whatever else bullshit that they flush their weed with. Right. You know, you're just getting a pure hit. Uh, big dabber in the morning, bag in the afternoon. Uh, when I get done doing this, I'm going to probably take four or five big dab hits, go get in the jacuzzi, and then take some more dab hits. So well, that's about who, it. <laughs> who's living better than you right now, my man? Come on. Hey, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to live the dream, my brother. I'm trying to live the dream. Yeah, and you are, man. You definitely are. And uh, I gotta, yo. Next time I'm in Vegas, I may have to get medicated with you, bro. Oh, brother, now look at this. You can't Ooh. even see through this bag on a volcano bag. You would see through it. This yeah. is the bag, and like I said, yeah, this goes on top of a heat gun, basically, and it blows some marijuana into this. You have this really nice mouthpiece, and when you press on it, it comes out. So here oh, we go. Go for it, shotgun, baby. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. the god! The, you really are the Godfather. There's no question about it. Oh, <clears throat> this is so so sweet. This way, <clears throat> look at me. <laughs> I love it. Oh my god, yo! You would you you and Chris, the CEO of MMA Uncensored, you guys would get along great, man. He's all about it too. He's all about getting medicated, dude. I know. First of all. I think everybody smokes. They just don't want people to know. Okay. I believe it. I believe that. <laughs> but I think everybody should get that. Again. It would make the world a better place. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, yeah, well, you're gonna next time I do medicated cardio. Are you gonna come join me and say something? Hell yeah, bro! I, I, I'm at. Hey, I'm on there telling stories. Don't forget now when I'm on there, I'm really medicated. It's not no joke. I've probably been smoking two, three hours in the morning when I do that show. That's great. And so if you have questions, man, just don't ask me stupid shit like, what's your favorite wrestling match? And who's your favorite wrestler today? Man, ask me some serious shit. You know, I mean, I, it comes from the horse's mouth. So, I mean, let, you know, ask me. I, won't, I usually won't tell on people unless they want to be told, but I'll tell on myself. That's what's up. Okay, I respect it. Definitely. So what what was it for you? Like when 
when did you get involved with wrestling and how did you get involved? How what was that whole story like of you getting into the world of wrestling? Um, I was basically working in a topics club called uh, Crazy Horse, and I was I was a, a manager bartender, and they were filming a movie with Arnold uh, with Sylvester Stallone called Over the Top. It was an arm wrestling. Movie. Yep. Well, a lot of dudes in that movie, including Norton, were wrestlers. A lot of those guys were wrestlers. They might not be big name wrestlers, but they were wrestlers. They would come to my bar and do what I'm at that time. I'm benching like 580. I'm pulling 700. I'm squatting 700. Dude, I'm fucking, I'm totaling 2,000 pounds. I'm just a big, strong biker, cowboy type of dude with a bunch of, you know, tattoos. Damn. And uh, they would come in there like, dude, you should be a wrestler. And I really said this. I'm like, man, I want to do that phony ass shit. And they're like, dude, well, you ever heard of Bam Bam Bigelow? And a lot of things that people don't know about me is I'm more of a biker cowboy than you could believe. And as people would think I am, like, if you go out my truck right now, I got country music on. Oh, that's what's <laughs> up. That's what's up. <laughs> so, you know, um, uh, this led to that. Uh, I knew who Bam Bam Bigelow was. He had tattoos. You know, I've been tattooed since 83, 84. I mean, I've been like this since then. And there was no black people tattooed back then. There was none. There was the football players, but I think, nope, maybe I, Allen Iverson had a couple, but nobody had tattoos. In college football, you couldn't even wear them. Huh. So I was so different. I made a couple calls. They see me. Um, I went to a wrestling school in New Jersey, and you're normally, brother, you're normally in these wrestling schools for a year or so. I was in wrestling school for maybe two months, and Jerry the King Lawler, you've heard of him, right? Of course, man. Jerry the King Lawler see me. Uh, he offered me a job, my very first match ever, ever, not in the practice in the studios and the dojos. My very first match ever was against Jerry the King Lawler on a Monday night at Memphis, Tennessee, at the Memphis Coliseum. And anybody that knows anything about wrestling, man, that's a big-ass deal. I NWA? Uh, it was called USWA, Mid-South Wrestling. Yeah. Cool. And uh, I beat him in the middle, one, two, three, my very first match. And that's how I started in wrestling. And that was literally less than two years after I made that call to go to wrestling school because I was so different. There was no black dudes like me. Mm -hmm. There's no white dudes like me. Right. No dudes like you, period. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so what was your, uh, what was your gimmick uh, when you first came up? What was it? Well, I have was a tattoo. Oh, my arm here. Yep. Let me see. I don't know if you can see it. This is the soul taker. Okay. That's the soul taker. Taker of women's souls. And uh, that was my first character, the soul taker. Wow. <clears throat> it's funny, the, ta that. the taker of women's souls, and then eventually you became the pimp, the golf hey. roller. Pimp it ain't easy, man. Pimp it ain't easy. <laughs> That is so cool. So Jerry Lola got you involved over the top, Stallone. That's cool, man. See, I love this stuff, man, because the stuff I didn't know. This is great. From there, after the program with, uh, excuse me, after the program with Jerry, then they brought. They said, "Hey, you know, we got to find somebody." That was a monster. Dude. That was just a gap. And they're like, yeah, "We got to find somebody to, for you to work with." So they, we're going to bring this redheaded kid in. So they bring this redheaded kid in, and we have a match. You, you might have heard of him before. His name's Undertaker. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, so me and, me and the Undertaker have a match, and the match is so shitty because we're both so green, and nobody like Jerry Lawler's leading us that they made us a tag team. And then from that day, that's like 1989 to this day, man. That's one of my best friends in this world. But you know, and then from there, uh, we ran our program. Mark went to WCW. I went to Germany. When I got out of Germany, Mark went to. WWF, and then I got my tryout in WWF and became Papa Shango when I got back from Germany after a year. Yeah, I remember when you came out as Papa Shango. I was a, I was a little kid, and I was like, I was scared. You know, as a little kid, you were scaring people. You were scaring kids, man, because you came out with the skulls and the smoke. I was like, oh, boy. And you you were what, about 6'6", six, 6'7"? Six, six, I'm a legitimate 6'5". I think they build me at 6'7". Okay. But I'm over 300 pounds and always have been. 
That's Boy, you you had us us little kids shaking, <laughs> my friend. Then I, I, I one of you, I remember you you feuded with the Undertaker for a little bit. That was fun. Warrior was the big one, the Ultimate Warrior. Remember me making him grow up? And yes, that's right. <laughs> shaking the skulls around him, and yeah, that Bro, was that was a dope. You know, I'll, uh, do signings. I'll do signings and stuff, and sometimes I'll paint up as Papa Shango. Mm -hmm. And to this day, 35, 37 year old men will say, "Bro." I'm I'm a grown man now, but and they're shaking my hand and they're shaking like this. They're like, dude, you have no idea how you affected me as a kid. And to <laughs> this day, man, I know I'm bro, but it's still a little weird being next to you because I can get the shit out of kids and people your age, I probably scared the shit out of. Dude, scared the shit out of me. That's for damn sure. But it it, it, it was so much fun, man. What and then how did like um well, I, let's say that, that that was pre-attitude ever, you know, <coughs> the warrior and everything like that. Um, what would you say, like, from that era, from pre-attitude era, um, I guess what was your favorite moment from that era? Was it the warrior feud? Was was there something that stands well, out would, for you? Where would you put the nation of domination? That was attitude ever. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was – there. there was no – when I was the Godfather, I was way into the attitude era. Okay. Um, there is, <laughs> I think, every wrestler in wrestling would have liked to have been the Godfather to be able to do what I was doing every day. Oh yeah. Um, my biggest Papa Shango moment, at least what people still talk about today, is me making the Ultimate Warrior puke and putting the spell on people and stuff. Yeah. Uh, the Nation of Domination, because that was the start of the rock. That's when the rock really became the rock is when they put him in the nation with us. And all of us were a big part of that. So that's a big scene. And then to become the godfather out of that and just to become at that point in my life, like I'm saying, I'm no longer, I always tell people there's that know me for a long time. They're like, dude, you've changed so much from what, how mean you used to be. And I always tell people it's two things that changed me to my two ladies, my wife and marijuana. Those are the two things that <laughs> Mary Jane. My life. And uh, it's just, you know, I've left all that meanness behind. And it's just cool just being you. I'm not a ultimate fighter. You remember the comma thing that we did? That's what we should talk about. Um, comma, I'm not a voodoo man. I, the Godfather is so is me. I don't know if I'm more the Godfather or he's more me, but <laughs> I am the Godfather. Dude. And, yeah. And everything I talk about, I basically do. You know, you know, it's funny you brought up the the nation because, like, you know, with everything going on in the world, and we won't get into that, but how that would play out, the nation of domination in today's world would probably be insane, like over let, a thousand times ask, over, man. Let me ask you a question. Would they be – if the nation today, would they be babyface or heels? Babyface, man. 100%. Okay, now DX would DX be babyface or heels going against the nation? Heels for sure, man. Isn't that weird? Isn't that crazy yeah. how pop the culture and the world, the times have changed? Bro, they hated us in the nation. The, the N word, <laughs> dude, we loved it. They would call us every nasty, especially in the South, man. They would call us every nasty name you could think of. And we loved it. We you guys loved it. on it. It was just cool. Today, you'd probably be cheered. Oh, 100%. How did everybody that... would be standing up with their fists like this. How, how did that? Yeah, for sure, man. How did that Um, how did that come about, the nation, like behind the scenes? Who, whose idea was I it? I have no idea. I wasn't even supposed to be in the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, I literally showed up to TV after maybe six months of uh, – training to become Papa Shango again. They were going to bring out a, a different version of Papa Shango. I actually showed up to TV to be Papa Shango, right? And then they're like, hey, Vince wants to talk to you. And I'm like, cool, man, I want to talk to Vince. Because he's being psycho in there. He's like, Charles, change the plan. And I'm like, well, change the plan. He goes, we're going to put you in the nation of domination. We're going to call you Kama Mustafa. And uh, – you and Farouk are going to wrestle Ron, or you and Ron Simmons are going to wrestle Undertaker tonight and you're going to go over. And I'm like, what? So that's how I got put into the nation. The nation has seen all type of different forms. There have been white guys in the nation. They've had rabbit uh, 
But I think the nation that people remember is me, D'Lo, Ron, I, Mark Henry, and The Rock. Mark Henry and Farouk, yeah. The five yeah. of you guys. Yeah. Mark Henry was a big addition, man, when they brought him in, too. That was like, oh, boy, they're getting yeah. serious now. Mark Henry was – you talking about a strong mother son of a bitch? Just, woo, strong. I've seen that, too. We used to say – I'm not going to say what we used to say because these days I get trouble saying it. <laughs> but he has unhuman strength. I just say that. Wow. You know, yeah, I think I know so where you're going with that. But yeah, keep it um, on. He used to be able, this is no bullshit, a steel frying pan, a steel frying pan. I've seen Mark Henry take it and roll it up like a burrito. And you're like, dude, that's, I've seen it. You wow. know? I, I think my. At my, at my best, my bench was around 600 pounds, mm -hmm. and Mark could only bench at that time, but Mark could only bench like 500 pounds, oh and so God. I always would bench with him because I could beat him, but he could squat like a 1,000 pounds, and he could pull like a – it was ridiculous, you know, what he could do there, but uh, I, would, I could compete against him in the bench. That's the only thing I could compete with him on. Wow. That, that's so cool. I saw it. the bag, man. What's That's that? my brother-in-law there. Oh. He's, he's making the bags. Oh, man. I wish you could pass that over here, man. But we Ray, ain't, we you ain't come to Vegas, technology, bro. <laughs> when, when you come to Vegas, I'm going to take you to a whole different level. I'm ready, man. I want to visit SpaceX and see what's going on up there. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be space something when you come here. <laughs> That's what's up, bro. <laughs> So yeah, man. Like the nation that that was uh, that was something special, man. But I enjoyed it. Like even you know attitude era as a kid, like it was something special, man. Because when you guys came out, when you heard that theme music, first of all, that theme music was the shit that got everybody's attention right away. You know what, brother? I I, I swear, because on my Instagram, somebody posted a thing where, uh, and if you go to my Instagram, you can see it. Um, I am the Godfather on Instagram. I know it says it there, but. Um, it, when we were doing it, it was just part of the, what we did. It was just a, not a job, but it's just what you did every day. But to look back at it now and see the impact that it had and see the impression on people's faces, you're like, wow, that was a lot heavier than I was at the time. I didn't think it was that heavy. But now you look mm -hmm. back at it and go, wow, that was pretty strong. You got these four or five big, strong black men out there. We are the nation. Yeah. yeah. It was, you know, then when they put the rock in there, I mean, you know, woo, just epic, epic. Yeah. He became, like you said, he became the rock. His character came out, his personality came out, and people, you know, it was cool. I remember his first watching the nation of domination come out, all you guys in the ring, and the first promo he cut was when he said, Die, Rocky, die. He goes, every time I come out, all I see are these signs, die, Rocky, die. That's the thanks I get. And then he just went off after that. Everybody hated his guts, and it was perfect. It was like the best heel, man. Vince came to – I mean, I always say true story. Why wouldn't it be a true story? I'm fucking telling it. But uh, Vince came to me and Ron, and he goes, hey, do you know who uh, Dwayne Johnson is? And I didn't know who he was. I wasn't really following wrestling at that time. I just got back. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd been off for a year or so. And so Ron's like, yeah, I know who you. And so I got Ron's down, Ron's voice down perfect. So he goes, listen, I'm going to put him in the nation. Um, and he basically said, once I get the people to hate this kid, when I turn him, he will be the biggest thing wrestling's ever seen. Wow. And that's what Vince told me to Ron. Once I get people to hate this kid and I turn him, He's going to be the biggest thing. And that's what Vince knew that before, man. And, and look what happened. We knew right away because, you know, it, even though people hated us, once he got in the group, people started liking us a little bit more because mm -hmm. we had that whole Stone Cold Austin, you know, approach to things. So yeah. uh, you know, it was a good group to be part of. You know what's funny is I do a lot of signings, and when I do signings, there'll be pictures of The Rock in the nation, and people will say, is that The Rock? I didn't know he wrestled. Oh, that's so Did funny. you believe that? And a lot of people just, I mean, as time has passed, a lot of people just know him as the uh, actor. Right. 
Crazy, it's crazy, but true. Yeah, that is crazy, but true, man. I, I'm surprised that people don't know a lot of people because they were kids or they didn't watch wrestling, so they don't know that he was a wrestler. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I, I could never even oh. fathom that. Oh, and that's why, that's why I'm bringing that up. I'm like, it, yeah. it happens all the time. And they're like, is that The Rock? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He wrestled? Oh, yeah. He was one of the best. Him, he I got to say... Brother. Him and Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 18 was my favorite match. That was electric, man. That's a lot of talent there, man. Uh, yeah. that's, you know, that's that's all oh, my bags coming good. Oh yeah. So your what was it like traveling behind the scenes? Like who were your travel buddies and what did you guys do? Like all the I'm sure you got some crazy stories behind the scenes. Uh, at first, me and Undertaker traveled a lot together. And then as he got so big, and I was always a heel. I couldn't travel with him no more. Um, I spent a lot of time with uh, Ron Simmons and Bradshaw, a lot of time with Teddy Long. I rode with Viscera for a while because I felt sorry for his big ass because Viscera was so big, God rest his soul, yeah. that uh, he'd have to rent an expedition or they would rent an expedition for him because he was that big, he couldn't get into nothing else. So uh, uh, I jumped in the car with him for about a year because he was a big smoker, and we just ride down the road smoking together. And a uh, good time. But uh, Ron and John I rode with for a long, long time. I'd take her maybe for the first two, three years, but after that it was Ron and John. They had a nice little thing going. The tag oh, team. Dude. You talk about the Godfather being real. Those two motherfuckers are about as real as you can get to to be like their characters. Oh, I bet. Oh, they used to kidnap me. It got, it, it, it got to be a point where I didn't want to go out anymore. You know, I, I literally, my life was so crazy that I would just want to go back to my hotel, smoke, and play Tiger Woods PlayStation Golf. That's what I would do. <laughs> and sit there and smoke because, dude, from from three o'clock in the afternoon till 11 at night, I was the godfather. And there'd be hoes around me and there was smoking involved and drinking involved and hoes involved and titties involved and <laughs> just dudes. It was like that all day. And then Ron and John would want to go out at night. Come on, let's go to go to a country bar or a topless club or some type of bar. And I'd be like, and so then what they would do is instead of going back to the hotel room, they would drive right to the bars. I mean, back then there was no Uber and Lyft and all that shit. Yeah. So I'd be stuck there. But yeah, man, you know, I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with Taker. The fun that me and Taker had, there was no social media back then. There was no internet. There was no. Mm -hmm. There was none of that. There was, no, there was no social media, so you weren't being exposed like you were today. So we had a lot of fun back then when there was no cell phones. No, I remember when just beepers came out. And we'd be like, dude, why would you want to be for that? Means your old lady can get a hold of you anytime. <laughs> and you know, so that's when we used to have a lot of fun. Nowadays, if you had fun like that, it'd be on the news. That you know, it'd be on the internet an hour later. Dude, everybody's got a camera on them. You can't do anything. Dude, thank God, I don't care that people. Only thing I do is smoke weed. So if they want to, and it's legal here in Las in Nevada, so if they want to catch me doing that, God bless you, because you bless. can easily catch me. <laughs> yeah, I don't even. I think with everything going on, nobody's even thinking about marijuana as anything anymore. It's just, and they shouldn't anyway. That's it's the least thing they should be worrying about. That's true. So when did uh like did somebody approach you in, in WWE brass and say, hey, we want to change the character around? How did how did it all start with the Godfather? I was in the nation at this point. The Rock was kind of getting ready to go on his own. Uh, it was me, D'Lo, and Mark Henry. D'Lo and Mark Henry were kind of starting to do their little tag thing. Rock was going on his own. I wasn't doing anything. So my contract was coming up. Uh, I was, uh, to this day, I haven't shaved in a couple of days. You can see my hair. My hair goes fast. And so I started growing my hair. And uh, the clothes that I wore, I, I used to wear a black, like biker's vest, black pants, black cowboy boots. But I wore silver. And as my hair's growing, people just started saying, go, Wally, well, you look like a pimp. I was like, fuck, I look like a pimp for it. And so my talking to my wife, she's like, there might be something to this, honey. And so I wanted to be a mean pimp, all black and slapping the hose around and just being a heel pimp, like a real pimp. Mm -hmm. and my wife's like, no, no, no. 
you got to be more like Huggy Bear. And we're loud like Huggy Bear. And because at that time, I'm still mean. And you know? I'm still kind of like, I don't wear that shit. I ain't wearing no yellow. I ain't wearing no pink. Like, what? And so uh, I fought her. So she started having the jewelry made. We had a seamstress that made all my clothes and my outfits. Every time I'd come off the road, I'd have a new outfit. If I ever wore a vest on TV, because most of them had marijuana things on the back of them. If I wore it on TV, I would never wear it on TV again. I'd only wear it in the house shows. Mm -hmm. uh, but we just slowly start developing this character. And then one day, I was wrestling Bradshaw. Me and Bradshaw. Bradshaw, man, if the people don't know, he's just a rough and tough, old school, beat you up, drink beer, Yahoo, Texas. You little buddy, 6'7", 340 pounds. Played semi-pro football, all that crap, right? We're beating the we're best friends too. We're beating the hell out of each other in the matches, and we're just because it's how we are. We're just beating the hell out of each other, and the people are sitting on their hands, meaning there's no applause, there's no anything. The people are just like not reacting. It's like all right. So one day, I'm like, let's try something different. And so I went to the agent who was Jack Lanza, and I'm like, hey, let's try something different. Now, mind you, now me and John Bradshaw are going 15 minutes and we're getting no reaction from the people. 12, 15 minutes. I said, I'm just going to tell you what I did. So I go out there, right? And I'm dressed now. Now I got braids and now I'm kind of looking more pimpish. And so I go out there and give them a the bite. I swear, we're in Louisville, Kentucky. I swear it went just like this. I'm like, and I'm high as fuck. <laughs> I'm going there like, you know, I just grabbed the mic. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to say it. I'm a pimp. <laughs> and just like you chuckle, they all chuckle. But I said, but what you don't know is right here in Louisville, man, they got some of the best toes ever born. Oh. And now people are popping. I'm like, I know that because there's one of my old hoes over there. And it's like, ah, there's then I'd find an older, fatter, ugly one. I'd be like, oh, <laughs> there's one of my old hoes over there. And the people kind of like, I'm like, hey, you know, if it ain't easy, you know, shit. <laughs> It's like you're laughing, they're laughing. So now we're getting a reaction that we weren't getting before. I'm in here holding this like a mic and shit. <laughs> so now we're, now we're getting a reaction. So I basically, there was no girls involved with this. And I'm like, listen, Bradshaw, I said, instead of me and you, and I'm keeping it real, instead of me and you beating the hell out of each other for 15 minutes and nobody gives a shit anyway, that's what I'm saying. And I'm like, right now, in the back, in the limo, man, I got six of the nastiest hoes you ever seen. And I'm like, and I know you're freaky behind. These hoes will do anything you want them to do. <laughs> I said, all you got to do, turn around, walk out this ring, and you have the time of your life. And the people are like, and I'm like, man, I don't know about you, but I take the hoes. What about you people? And all the people start saying, chatting, take the hoes. Oh, take the hoes. I'm yeah. like, this they're telling you what to do. I'm like, they don't give a shit about me and you fight. Take the hose. <clears throat> so he would take the hose and the place would pop. Now, mind you, now we're in 10 minutes. We haven't touched each other. And now the people are reacting to everything we do. Like it's a main event and we haven't touched each other. So now he would take the girl, start walking away. And then I would tear him. You stupid rednecks. Just another stupid white man following you. I'd start that crap, right? Yeah. And they'd start booing me. Well, he would slowly turn around and then he'd get in the ring with my back turned. They'd buzz me. I'd turn around. He hit me with that lariat. One, two, three. The place would go crazy. I would jump up and say, man, Pippin ain't easy, man. And the place would pop. like. And from that day on, they said, whoa, there might be something to this. Something there. And that's how it started. Wow. And Vince yeah. must have been like, do it, right? It was all for Vince him. So. He, Vince's exact words was, there might be some legs to this. Hmm. And then I told him, I'm like, well, listen, you know, I'm going to, I just so you know what I'm doing. I'm, there's a big audience out there that I'd like, Vince, everybody smokes weed. They might not say they do, but they do. I don't give a fuck if they say that. They do. Very hmm. few don't. I don't give, whoever's watching this, I don't care what you say, you do. <laughs> all right i said so i'm gonna start making a lot of references to those people and you watch how they come in oh, and they it's surely so came cool in. to tell people to roll a fatty for this pimp daddy like, like that, that some bitch y'all <laughs> pimping ain't easy man pimping ain't easy <laughs>
Dude, I used to first I went to I went to the house shows when I was a kid and you were there and I seen you getting in the ring with the hose and I was there chanting along with the fans, you know, and at home, you know, watching the pay-per-views, same thing, you know, chanting <laughs> along with the Godfather, man. You were like it was, it was entertaining. Were, it was super entertaining. I mean, you were the highlight, man. We knew the Godfather was coming with hose. I mean, that was it. When you heard that music hit, it was like everybody popped like crazy. And we knew the whole train was coming. Come aboard the train, baby. We were There's all on that, that train. <laughs> like you said, the pop. Uh, most of the buildings are basketball buildings or ice arenas or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they have applause meters up somewhere. And in The Rock and Stone Cold, a lot of people used to see who would get the loudest pop at night. And I said, oh, I can figure out, because I was getting a pretty loud pop when you, when you're getting a pretty loud pop. So I'm like, let me think. See, being high, being high, I'm like, what can I do to get even a louder pop? So I said, what I'm going to do, they're going to hit the music. I'm going to get the pop. I'm going to walk through the curtain with no hopes. And then the people start like, hey, hey, hey. They start turning on you, man. And I'll be like, all right, wait a minute. And then I would wind up and boom, and then call the girls out. And I would get even a bigger pop. Yeah. And it was so bad that the announcers and ruined stuff, they would say, lay off her and drop all their second pop. Because you couldn't talk over it. Wow. And so that was so cool. That's why I did that for the second pop. And when I called the girls out, the place would go crazy when the girls would come out. And, you know, 95% yeah. of the time, they were pretty hot. They were very hot. Where did you guys get these girls from? How would they Super get them? Well, well, first, me, uh, me, Undertaker, and the guys called the Harris Boys, who were Ron and Don Harris, part of his biker gang. We used to go, at very first, we'd go to strip clubs the night before and just say, hey, you want to be on TV? And then it took off. As soon as we put girls on the first Sunday or Monday, whenever TV was, it, got, it took off so big that they took over it, and then they started getting the girls, and they were getting them from strip clubs. And then the strip club girls were getting so wild that they started getting actually actresses, and then they found out that they were no better than the strip club girls. They got just as wild. And I encouraged it. <laughs> <laughs> I really encouraged it. I can only imagine what that backstage me, locker room was like oh, with you, bro. It, dude, it, can you imagine being a wrestler? And I'm not accusing nobody of anything. But can you imagine just the everyday life of the ring and working out and traveling? And every night you're going and there's five or six strippers in the back room. As soon as you get there, there's like, oh, there's five strippers sitting there drinking and shit. Come on, man. Wow. Rock stars, man. That's rock star stuff right there. <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, anybody that was around, any wrestler would be lying if they didn't tell you I was probably the first favorite person in the dressing room. Oh, I bet. I, I bet everybody wanted to be your friend. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah. I told I mean I totally would want to be a friend. I should have been a wrestler. I'm actually six foot nine and a half. A lot of people don't know that about me. Really? No, I'm only oh, kidding. You should have wrestled. <laughs> no, I'm, only kidding. Wrestled I'm only kidding. Bro, like, bro, yeah, I, bro, bro, I'm five eight on, on a good day. I'm five eight. <laughs> That's funny enough. <yeah. laughs> yeah, I tell people I'm always sitting down, bro. So uh, yeah, I'm like six nine. They're like, wow, you're a big guy. I'm like, I'm just I'm like, hey, well, you know, I, just like you should have wrestled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I would have just wrestled if you were still around with the hose, man. I'm, I'm more into hey, that. That would have been the easiest night of your life, you know. <laughs> that would have been the easiest wrestling match of your life, and you would have had the, you got a great reaction from the people. Damn right. You know? just, so, just great time. Amazing, man. Amazing. You're an excellent entertainer, great wrestler, and – so now, years later, the call, you get the call for the Hall of Fame. How did, how did that, how'd you find out about you becoming a Hall of Famer? I, uh, for the last 10 years or so, I've been, I'm always at the Hall of Fame. They bring you in, you, you're not on TV, but you're doing the fan access, you're doing personal stuff, you're doing stuff on the network. And uh, Mark Carano called me and he's like, who I'm good friends with. He's like, what's up, Papa? And I'm like, chilling. But I was on the road, actually, I was going somewhere. I think I was going to shoot. And he's like, uh, what's going on? You know, you all set for WrestleMania? I'm like, yeah, I'm all set. And he's like, well, who are you bringing? I'm like, who am I bringing? What the fuck's the matter who I bring? He goes, well, we want you to bring your whole family. And I'm like, why would I bring my whole family to WrestleMania? He goes, well, uh, Vince is putting you in the Hall of Fame this year. And that's how the call went. 
And I'm like, oh, wow, really? I'm like, did they make a special category for a pimp? Or- <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I bet you I'll be the only pimp in the Hall of Fame. In the w- There's all type of people in the Hall of Fame, entertainers, actors. But there's only one pimp that's a big pot. And I don't think there'll ever be another pimp in the Hall of Fame, my friend. You got to keep watching my videos, too, because I'm starting to get creative with some of them. Uh, I try to think of some funny ones to do. And it's really just me being at home, being myself, which is, there's no acting, there's no fakeness. It's just my everyday <laughs> stupid ass self. I love it, man. I'm, I'm super entertained by it. I've been watching, like, I'm the type of person where I don't like to overdo it. So I'm purposely not watching all of them out the gate. I want to. But, I, like, every day, I just want to watch one or two of your videos because it really makes me laugh. And I think I'm going to start doing it in the morning with my coffee in the morning. Like, to start my day right with a, with a good laugh and a smile, I'm going to watch one or two of your videos every morning now. <laughs> Because they are, dude, they are so fucking funny. Like, I was cracking up yesterday and today. I was just cracking up. It's just, they're, they're funny. Bro, there's no thought to them. I'll, I'll seriously, I'll get up. And usually when I get up, I get in the jacuzzi. First thing in the morning, I get in the jacuzzi. So I'll get up and I'll smoke a little bit and I'll turn the camera on. And then whatever's going on, I'll just do it and kind of say some stupid shit and then say, hey, see you in an hour, you know. And I, tomorrow, I'm going to do it tomorrow morning. I'll do, uh, it's hard to do any real serious cardio because it's hard to talk an hour of cardio. Yeah. But I can walk on the treadmill and do the bicycles pretty easy for an hour and just do a little bit of sweat. But I'm like, people ask me some cool shit. Don't just ask me, do I, you know what? People ask me, do you know Stone Cold? And I'm like, really, dude? Yeah, it's no probably shit. kids. It's probably kids, though. Oh, yeah. Little guys, they're like, yeah. you know Stone Cold? Have you ever met The Rock? And I'm like, Come on, dude. I'd rather you ask me fucking smoking questions. But- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, bro. I'll definitely be in those lives, man. I'll be peeping in there, checking you out, man. I'll, I'll throw some I'll throw some questions in there. And for the viewers, too, guys, IG, at The Godfather, who, in my personal opinion, you have the best handle on Instagram, hands down, The Godfather. <laughs> There's, no better. There's no better handle right there, bro. I love it, man. I, I, I know, I'm just enjoying myself having fun. Um, as things open it up, you'll start seeing me doing more and more stuff. But I, I'm going out swinging, bro. I'm, uh, you know, I tried to try to have my own products and that type of stuff, and I lost so much money trying to do that. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to have fun now and enjoy myself. And uh, like you said, you'll start seeing me more at a lot of cannabis functions, and uh, you'll see more and more. You'll see more and more of my crazy. You got, you got to follow me, though. You got to follow me. Follow. It's right, right here, folks. Right here, the Godfather. Follow. And I, dude, like honestly, I'm just, you know, I'm just saying because I, I feel like I'm a creative thinker too, especially when medicated. And I will tell you, the Godfather THC line sounds really good, man. Um. Hey, hey, I'm meeting with somebody this Thursday. Um, I tried the CBD route and all that and this and that, but like I said, it's just. I think I'm just going to go another route and just exp- tell people what I like and what I think. And I, you know, I've been smoking for a lot of years and I got a lot of knowledge for whatever it's worth. And I mean, we were literally what people are doing now, these dab hits I was making in 88, 89. I mm-hmm. was making what these people are, are uh, smoking. Now I had, a, people had no idea what it was. I was carrying it around, but I was making the same stuff, the, the BHO stuff, just like they're making it. I was making it in the late eighties. Wow. Yeah. You're like, how can he be doing that? Dude, but, I'm, you got me thinking, bro. I think I'm going to have to come visit you sooner than later. <laughs> uh, I probably do a lot more about cannabis than I do about wrestling. <laughs> oh, my God, man. That's too funny, bro. Yeah, I'm going to – obviously, I want my viewers to follow you. Um, dude, I, I had a blast, man, talking to you, bro. This was really cool. This was like – Talking to a cool guy that I could see myself just hanging with and being a buddy with, but also a part of my childhood, too, growing up and watching you. So for me, this was a super cool experience, man. And I, I want to thank you so much for being my guest in my house on MMA Uncensored, brother. And uh, I would love to stay in touch. And also, I want to send you an MMA Uncensored T-shirt. Uh, so let me know what address you want me to send that to. And it would be my honor to send one out to you, bro. Yeah, I would love to wear it. You got big... 
You got at least three extra large, right? We got three XL for you, big boys. Don't you worry, okay. my friend. We'll be fine, man. Hey, it was my honor. And please, people, follow me. Keep up with me because uh, you'll get a kick. It'll be a great way to start your day. That's right. Good things are coming, man. Hey, peace, everybody. Thank you. Peace, brother. Thank you. God bless you. And that's a wrap, folks. MMA Uncensored. I know my camera's a little weird right now. I, I That's my fault. I did something there, so I do apologize. I tried getting it uh, back because I always like perfect quality. So uh, please, sorry about that. But uh, I want to thank our guests. This was so much fun. Two hours of nonstop action. I love it. Uh, so I want to give a special thank you to Macy Barber and Charles Wright, WWE Hall of Famer, the Godfather, for being on the podcast tonight. Thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart for being on the podcast. I hope all the viewers had fun. We had some viewers that called in as well. Uh, so thank you guys. I hope you have an amazing Tuesday. And I look forward to uh, the next episode. we got some good things coming. But um, full interview will be up tomorrow, replay on YouTube. Uh, also out this week will be the podcast audio version for this episode. So stay tuned. Thank you guys very much and have a great night.